coffee break with me. Woo! Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. How are you today? Today I'm beginning with my new declutter series. Today I'm beginning with, as opposed to today I'm starting my new. You guys, my ESL moments are becoming more and more prominent. I don't know what's happening, but I kind of like it. So today I am starting my declutter series. That means that I'm going to go through all this that you guys see here and go through my stash, declutter it, and just part ways with stuff that I don't use that is expired or simply just does not fit into my heart anymore. In case you guys are wondering, all over my face, I am wearing the ColourPop Nectar Collection. Um, I believe ColourPop is launching kind of like a series of monochromatic collections where they do like all peach, all pink, all whatever. I don't know what the third set is, but I'm sure you guys will find out because you follow them all over social media. So if you guys are unfamiliar with decluttering, decluttering is basically uh, when you go through your stash and just part ways with products that no longer fit your life, whether it's because they're expired or because you don't use them or because they just they just they're not lovable anymore. You know, you've grown you've grown up, you've matured, and you just you've 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 distanced yourself from each other, and it happens. It happens all the time. But I have had some time, uh, from some time now, I've gotten a little bit uh, frustrated, a little bit overwhelmed with the current situation of my background. Not because it's crowded, I love the way it looks. I mean, if I didn't like it, I wouldn't have it that way. Um, but it's just too much, it's just too much stuff. And I feel like when you have so much, uh, can you really get through it? Probably not. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna break up these videos um, into sections, I think today we'll do um, these two cubbies here so it might be a little bit of a longer video simply because it's a variety of products from primers, foundations, concealers, powders, and brow products so it might be a little bit lengthy. Um, if something is worth pointing out or mentioning I will do so as well um, like a mini review or why I don't like it or whatever. Now please 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 keep in mind that I do receive a lot of product as samples from companies so that I could try them out so um, a lot of times these videos make people feel a little bit uncomfortable and that's totally okay. I promise I won't make you watch them. Um, but the other thing that you want to consider is um, a lot of times like my friends and family when I pass on products they'll ask me oh does it suck? Oh do you hate it? Oh is it horrible? No not at all. The simple reason that I am so um, um, detached with stuff like this it's because it's just stuff and that's just how I am in life in general when it's stuff clothes shoes anything that's stuff it's very easy for me to let go of things because they're just things and tomorrow I could have nothing you know what I mean so it doesn't carry that like emotional connection to me not to mention that there's too much stuff like I said so if I just have it sitting there it might just expire and I might never get to use it if I let go of it because I know I'm not going to use it as often you know my mom or my sister-in-law my neighbor or whoever can find a better use for these products so let's just go ahead and get started if anything is worth super hella duper mentioning or it's my holy grail or it's freaking amazing I will list it in the description box below okay so I'm gonna get my little basket ready this is where I'm gonna put the stuff apparently I haven't removed the tag even though I've used it for like a year um, I'm gonna put the stuff that I am decluttering in this basket so that we can kind of you know just get a little collection going so I guess we'll start off with this section here and then move on now I know a lot of you guys are gonna ask me Danny how tall are you because you can't even see my face right now I am 5'10 5'11 somewhere around that it's been um, it's been a topic for discussion. I have to go to the doctor and get measured again. <laughs> so we'll start off at the top. If you guys can see here, these are my foundations. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull everything out and then kind of move whatever I decide to keep back in. We'll start off with the hydrating primers. I have three of them. Three hydrating primers, Kat Von D, this new one from Kors, I believe is the brand. It's a Greek brand. And then uh, Kat Von D. Did I say Kat Von D already? So 100% pure cores or Cores. Oh man, I'm gonna be one of those. Um, and then Kat Von D. Obviously I don't need three hydrating primers, but if I were to pick one of these, um, I think I'm gonna go with this new one. This is the newest one and I've had the best results with it. So I'm gonna get rid of these two and we'll go ahead and keep this one. And then when it comes to like funky donkey primers, and I don't mean like funky donkey like they're, they're weird or they're just unique, they're different. Um, I have three and they're all from Becca. This one here is supposed to make you look fresh faced. It's the um, First Light Primer Filter. So if you had like a long night or you're a little rrr, rrr, from the night before, <laughs> this one's supposed to make you look fresh faced. I haven't noticed that it does a difference. And 
and I have had plenty of opportunities to prove it wrong. And then this one here is the backlight priming, um, the backlight priming filter. And this one is amazing. I love this. And then this is not a primer. This is the Shimmer and Skip Skin Perfector in Opal, I believe. And it is brand new. I've never actually used it. I'm not going to keep this because this is a little bit too dark for my skin tone. And even if I mix it into foundations, I feel like it's a little bit too intense, especially when I have something like this one already. So I'm going to go ahead and keep these because I haven't felt like I really need to give this one a chance. I feel like this one needs to be used quite a bit so that I can get a better understanding for it. So we're going to keep these two and we're going to move on with the opal, but I'll set that one aside since it's brand new. I could probably, you know, find a new home for it. Then I have um, three pore filling primers. So primers can be a little confusing because they're pore filling, pore smoothing, line blurring, um, you know, illusion primers. Like there's so many ways to classify primers. These three for me are the ones that actually fill in the texture of my skin. So they're like a silicone primer. It's so weird that you guys don't see me. Isn't it weird? Like. Maybe I should like, maybe I should kneel. <laughs> maybe I should pull up a chair. Um, actually, yeah, let's do that. I'll pull my chair over here. Look how cute my little cushion is. So, um, why did I think about this? Now the half of the video, you guys are looking at my boobs. You like that, don't you, Cochinas? So these three are like physical pore filling primers. They do the optical illusion. They do blur fine lines, but essentially they're like silicone-y, slippery primers that fill in your pores. I don't need three, but I really do like the three. So it's going to be hard for me to narrow it down because they're all really good. You know, some are more slippery than others. Uh, this one was featured in my monthly favorites. Actually, all three of these have been featured in monthly favorites in the last, you know, like two years. I told you guys recently that I wanted to get rid of half of my collection. Like I need to, I need to really, really eliminate half of everything. So I definitely have to cut it down and I have to keep one that I like. I feel like when I wear the Urban Decay one, it leaves a really nice finish, but my makeup doesn't last that long. You know, it's a little bit more slippery, so it doesn't set as well as, say, the Pores No More from Dr. Brandt. And then this one is good, but I feel like I like this one a little bit better. So these are very similar, but I prefer this one. So I'm going to get rid of these and keep this one. And then I saved these two for last because these are kind of like oddballs. These are very unique. They're very different. So these are two very unique primers. The Veil Mineral Primer from Hourglass is really awesome. The Bye Bye Pores Primer from Make Cosmetics is also very awesome. They're very, very different. They're both white, <laughs> which is probably why I assume like, oh, I'll just talk about them together because they're both white. Um, I like them both. You know, I wear this one a lot when... I'm not going to wear makeup, I'm going to go out. I feel like it leaves my skin looking really even. And then this one from Hourglass is very unique because it works very well with Hourglass foundations, A. And then B, it has sun protection in it, which is very unique for a primer. Um, the other thing with it is it can give you a really, 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 really flawless face, which is awesome, or it could really hate your foundation. So it's kind of hit or miss. I feel conflicted keeping it because, you know, sometimes it doesn't work with newer foundations that I'm trying, but when it does, oh my god, it works amazing. Anyway, enough talking, I'm going to keep up. Moving on to foundations, um, I'm going to kind of like shoot straight through the back and grab the It Cosmetics CC Cream because I wore these after not wearing them for a while, um, just recently and all day long I kept looking at my face and saying what are you wearing what are you wearing that looks awful that looks awful that looks awful it does not like my skin texture anymore and I had talked to you guys briefly about how as soon as I had my second son as soon as I turned 30 my skin is starting to change and the things that I normally would enjoy they don't work out as well anymore so it doesn't settle into my skin it doesn't look like skin it kind of like it looks it you can see it on my skin and it breaks apart really bad. It's just, it's horrible on my skin. I mean, when I first reviewed it, it's a great product. My sister-in-law still uses it. It looks amazing on her. So many people swear by that product. The ingredients are also better for the skin, but it just does not like me currently in my state of life. Can I say that about a foundation product? <laughs> okay, a couple of products that we're gonna zoom by and obviously keep because they're loves. The Tarte Rainforest of the Sea, I'm in the shade Light Sand. 
beautiful serum foundation, the Maybelline Dream Cushion. I just did a review. I will link it in the description box in case you're wondering how I feel about it. My favorite drugstore foundation, the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless. It's fantastic. It's the best foundation ever, and it's literally like, I don't know, $3, $4. Oh, I forgot a primer. Why is this down here? Danny's not organizing her life. This is the Milk Blur Stick. It's a great primer. Obviously, we're keeping that. Um, and then, uh, reaching over here, this is, and you guys are, I'm going to hear the hearts break across America. Um, this is the Touche Clat from uh, YSL. It's a beautiful foundation. I never use it. Literally never use it. It's amazing. I like how it looks on my skin. Um, you know, it's great. I just don't use it. Why? I don't honestly know. It smells a lot like perfume. Maybe that's why. I don't know. But it's just not, I don't use it. What is wrong with me? It's like a $90 foundation. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know how much it is. Um, Hourglass, the Vanish Stick Foundation. You know how I feel about that, guys. This is the Makeup Forever HD. I love this foundation. It's, it's just beautiful on the skin. It's beautiful for pictures. It's amazing, blah, blah, blah. You know I love it. I wish I had a different shade because I feel like this is a little bit too light and I'm probably not going to be able to use it come spring and summer. But that doesn't mean I don't want to keep it because it is relatively new. So it's a really great mix-in foundation at the moment. Um, two that I'm actually almost out of, so it'd be just dumb to let go of without using them up. The Urban Decay Naked Skin and the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue. These are my two favorites. I will wear these every single time I put on a foundation product and I use them to mix into the foundation. I remember when I started my channel, I was a big fan of ultra matte, super matte, full coverage, like potato peeler needed to remove my foundation at the end of the day. Like that's the look I wanted. I wanted full coverage. Like I was, I was the like number one fan of the Estee, uh, Estee Lauder double wear. That was like my jam. But the more that I stuck with my channel, the more I realized that I wanted to see my face. I wanted to see my age spots. I wanted to see my wrinkles. I wanted to see a little bit of my panda eyes. I wanted to see that because that's what skin looks like. You know what I mean? A lot of times we get engulfed and kind of uh, carried away with the Instagram model and the Instagram baddie and like cream contouring and all that stuff that we see and we're exposed to. And I mean, I'm the first one to tell you it looks amazing and flawless. But if you see that in person, Holy Moses, it looks like a mask. Like as much product as you see these people put on, that's how it looks like in person. It looks like there's product on the skin. And I don't feel like that is a sensible look. Disclaimer, if you do that and you like that, that's totally okay. What I'm saying is for me, for my lifestyle, if I'm gonna put on makeup, I want it to enhance what I look like. Sitting here I look with peach eyes. I want it to enhance my look. I don't want it to like really hide them. So I mix in these almost like really light coverage, sunscreen-ish, everyday type um, foundation products into regular foundations like this one or this one, and it gives me just the right amount of coverage that I like or that I'm used to. Then, um, I don't think I'm getting rid of that many foundations actually, because these are all foundations that I really, really like. Um, these are the two from Shea Moisture. These are serum foundations. They're very, very, very dewy. If you have extremely oily skin, you will break these down in like 10 minutes and they won't work for you. They are amazing if you really like the dewy look. So normal dry skin, amazing foundations. Unfortunately, I'm in between colors, so I need nude and latte mixed together to get my right shade. And then the last one is the Tarte Amazonian Clay Full Coverage Foundation in the shade Light Sand, of course. I don't remember how, I don't remember my favorite way to use this foundation. It's just on its own, it is extremely full coverage. It's kind of heavy and that's not really my style or my preference. So I do keep it when I want that super extra coverage, but I will never use it alone. I always mix it into something. And these two together actually make a really good combo. Let's move on to the second cubby. And in the second cubby, I have some brightening concealers, some correctors, eyebrow products, powders, mascaras, and powders. Honestly, oh, this is gonna be a very long video, but I feel like we can just really get through it very quickly. Um, these are two Smashbox Halo highlighting wands. I've never used them. I swatched them and I was like, oh, these are cool, but I didn't really ever think, usually when I swatch something, I automatically get 
an idea in my mind of what I want to do with it. Like I can imagine a tutorial or I can imagine how it, it would function in my life. With these, I was like, oh, they're pretty, but I didn't do anything with them. Um, then I have a NARS um, Custard. This is the Creamy Radiant. This is amazing for um, spot concealing on days where I don't want to wear foundation. So I'll wear everything else. Like I'll do brows, mascara, cream, cream, um, cream blush and cream highlighter, and then just spot conceal around my nose and my chin, and that's it. No foundation. This is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. It's pretty old. I'm not sure if it's expired. I'll have to check, but I never use it as well. You guys know how I feel about Tarte Shape Tape and Urban Decay's um, Naked Skin Concealer. These are my holy grail concealers, so they're not going anywhere. The Shy Bean from Bean, Shy Bean, Shy Bean, Shy Bean from Benefit is a great product. I have very little left in this little size, um, and I think I have a full size waiting for me somewhere. And then I just have two spoolies in here, because because why not? <laughs> uh, moving on. This, this is the um, corrector and brow drawer. So I know you guys can't see, but I'll kind of talk you through it. Erase paste, this is very old, so we're gonna kind of toss that probably. Then I have two pixie correctors. The reason that I've kept these is because they're brightening. They're not necessarily correcting. I don't feel like they're peach enough. Let me take that back. One of these is peach enough, the other one isn't. This is the corrector shade, and this is called the brightening peach. And then the other one is, beige, I believe, and this is like a brightening shade. I keep these, honestly, because I want a drugstore alternative to a corrector, but they never suffice for my Tarte or Eve Pearl. Like, they're not on that level. So why do I keep them? Honestly, I don't know, but I do, so we're saying goodbye. Um, and then my Sonia Kashuk Concealer Palette. This is from Target. It's a really great palette to have. About a year ago, I used to actually carry one in my purse. For days when I would go out and I would have like not a single stitch of makeup, but let's say I had a breakout or something happened or whatever, and I just kind of was feeling a little self-conscious, I would kind of carry it around because I feel like it gave me that option to cover the blemish or cover, um, I don't know, whatever was happening, like a little bit of that panda situation. It's a really great uh, concealer palette to have. Then we have a whole lot of brow products. Now, I'm gonna be kind of cutthroat when it comes to this because if you guys have seen my last I don't know, 12 get ready with me for the last two years. I only use one brow pencil and one brow gel. So this is a build a brow from It Cosmetics. Again, I don't want to repeat myself over and over again, but it's the truth. These are great products. The reason they're here, they like actually made the cut into my collection is because they're great products. Why am I letting them go? Because I don't have space for them anymore and because they're not getting used and they're just sitting there like wasting away and apparently getting broken. So, um, obviously, let's go through the Glossier Boy Brow, my favorite brow gel. We're going to keep that. Um, I have these brow pencils from LA Girl that I put away because I was like, oh, well, I want to try them. And so if I put them there, I'll remember to try them. I've never opened them. Seriously, Danny? Um, then I have two... Two, yes, two um, high brows from Benefit, the Glow and then the Regular. These are really great highlighting crayons. I actually used it today because I felt like my eyebrows weren't looking sharp enough, especially with this like peach eye look. I feel like it kind of just kind of muddled together. So I use these to highlight under my brow. Well, not those, one of them. Um, I have a brush in here, so when I want to blend out that um, highlighting under the brow, um, let's see, I have two Clinique brow products that I'm going to pass on because I have been doing my brows very light lately. I've been preferring to go with a blonde or a taupe just so that it gives my brows more dimension and these are like a medium brown. So it definitely gives me like groucho brows at the moment. Then, what do we have here? Oh, this is a Makeup Forever brow pencil, which I never liked. I don't know why I have it in there. Um, Soft Brown from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is my shade usually when I do like brown brows, but I actually hold on to this because of the spoolie. My e.l.f. eyebrow pencil in taupe, which is my holy grail. This is the Benefit Goof Proof Brow Pencil. I actually like this, and I'm in the shade 2, but I feel like whenever my face gets oily, sweaty, or if I'm wearing a really slippery primer, or if I'm going to be out in the sun, it's a creamier brow pencil. And we've talked about this before in several other videos, that I don't like creamy anything. Like, it needs to be a very stiff, that's what she said, a very stiff brow pencil so that it actually lasts on my face. Stiff or waxy is what I go for, and this one's kind of creamy. 
Um, and then um, the NYX brow pencil in ash brown. I don't remember if this was a dupe for soft brown or why don't you just swatch it? Yeah, this is a dupe for soft brown. So I'm going to go ahead and hold on to that. My hourglass arch brown warm brunette. Oh, I love that thing. And then um, two brow gels. This is the Ico. This is my holy grail eyebrow gel for a very long time until Serenity and Scott trumped it. And then Serenity and Scott got trumped by Glossier. So I'm kind of like a brow gel easy woman. <laughs> and then this is Gimme Brow from Benefit in the shade three, I think, right? Yeah, three. It's way too dark for me at the moment. So I'm going to let go of that. Whew, I feel like I can breathe, you guys. Let's zoom through powders. Maybelline Fit Me. It's a great drugstore powder. This is my C3 Studio Fix from MAC. Amazing. 100% pure in white peach. If you guys are into that, like, all-natural, organic, vegan, cruelty-free, like, super clean uh, beauty brands, this powder will change your life. This is the Urban Decay um, Naked Skin Foundation in, like, the powder version. I feel like I need to let it go just because I have too much stuff, but I actually kind of like it. Is it too dark for me? No, it's actually my perfect shade. So, well, you know what? We're going to keep it. I actually tried... Uh, this purple Jordana mascara in a video recently. Holy crap, they're awful. Like literally, you guys, horrendous. Then, um, a lot of mascaras that we have in here that I'm sure are expired. I'm going to go with yes. The Stila Lash Stunner is expired. Um, these I'm a little bit more cutthroat with because they go like right on my eyeball. This is the Lancome Hypnos Drama. I'm going to hold on to that. You guys know my two holy grail mascaras. And then the other day I was trying to feel fancy and open a new mascara. Uh, this is the Maybelline Lash Sensational Full Fan Effect. I don't know if this is the same as the one that I reviewed on my channel a year or two ago and I really liked and I actually repurchased it over and over and over and over again and I would actually use it more than this one. But the label on it looks a little different but the pink packaging is still the same. Anyway, I used it and I liked it but I don't know if it's the actual same product. You know what I mean? I hope you know what I mean. And then, the very last drawer, and we should be done with this video. Am I going too fast for you guys? <sighs> All right, so, what is this? Oh, you guys, I don't think I'm getting rid of anything in here. Oh yeah, I'll get rid of this. This is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Contouring uh, Palette. It has like the light side and the dark side. The formula of this powder is a dream. It's literally like rice flour. It is silky, it's amazing, it's beautiful, it like graces your skin, it doesn't settle into the fine lines, it doesn't cling on to dry patches, it's a dream. But I am pale AF and these two on me show up. So ideally you want the lighter shade to kind of get lost in the skin or at least highlight it a little bit. It literally looks like flour on my face. And then this one over here is a little bit too warm. So I don't know. I mean, I want to love it. I just can't. Like, you know, some products just don't work for you. Um, and then I have these two here. They're the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Powders. Holy Grail status. Cover effects that I featured in a monthly favorites. Not Holy Grail because I still prefer the Laura Mercier, but it's close. This is the NARS Translucent Crystal. I'm actually just about out of it. There's like hardly anything left. Why do I store these upside down? I get that question a lot. For some reason, I feel like if I store them upside down, it's not as gross because I pour a lot of powder into the cap and I don't use it all. So there's still some in the cap. So I feel like if I turn it around and close it, it's not as gross. Like some of that used powder won't fall back into the holes. Now, it's still gross because it's still in there, but it just makes me feel, <laughs> makes it feel a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? You know where I'm going with this? <laughs> Are you picking up what I'm putting out or putting down? Um, so yeah, that's kind of why I store them that way. And then two powders in here that are quite unique, um, but they're really cool additions to your collection. Um, this is the Luminous Light from Hourglass. This is a really cool product. After you set your under eyes, if you go in really lightly with like a powder and kind of just grace the top of your face right here, if you're not into highlighter, it doesn't look like a highlighter, but it does look like you got like touched by an angel. It's amazing. And then this one is Play It Proper from MAC. I really wish they would re-promote this product because it's, again, just like that one, but it's a pink.
pink shade. So you're like, well, I'm not gonna put pink powder on my face. What is that? That's kind of weird. But um, it's amazing. It's such a beautiful color. It's it's like, is it luminous? Is it is it powdery? Is it glowy? Like, what is it? It just gives your skin that perfect amount of color and luminosity and just it's pretty awesome. Anyway, so that is it for my very first decluttering episode. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I feel like it was very successful. What do you think? Does it still look kind of crowded? It still does, doesn't it? Oh man, we're not getting there. Like I really want it, I want it to be white. I want it to be bare. And has my under eye area looked this white the entire video? Why didn't you guys tell me? Come on you guys, I thought we had each other's backs. I thought we meant more to each other. For part two of my declutter series, I think we're just going to move on and, uh, oh man, it's going to get complicated and it's going to get messy because here we have potted, um, eyelid bases or primers or eyeliners and then it's blushes and blushes. So that's going to be a messy one. I think I'm probably going to skip that just because it's like so little and then I'm going to just do boom, all my blushes. You guys, do I have to do blushes? I don't think I did blushes before. I think in my previous declutter series, I just skipped it because I was like, no, you guys, they're blushes. What's wrong with you? <laughs> but it's getting out of hand. We gotta, we gotta handle that situation, you guys. Anyway, so um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And like I said, if I mentioned anything that was worth like, oh my God, life-changing status, you need it in your life, I will list it in the description box below. And uh, you guys know what to do. If you found this video useful, entertaining, or learned something, please give me a thumbs up or subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this coffee break is over. Bye guys.